Hey guys, so in this video we're going to be looking at the measures of central tendency for continuous distributions. So we've done measures of central tendency before, and so they're the mean, median, and mode. However, now we're going to look at how we can calculate them for continuous distributions, and specifically when we're looking for the probability density function. So when we have the graph in the area underneath. So we've got the mean, medium, and mode. So they're slightly different to calculate for all three. However, they do mean the same thing. So like the mean is like the average expected value. The median is the middle result. And then the mode is the most frequent. Okay, so firstly, the mean. How do we calculate that one? Well, assuming we have a probability density function which is fx. So that could be, for example, here, as, and then that area underneath. But it doesn't really matter what it looks like. So you calculate it by having this, and then you put infinity minus infinity x times fx dx. And this is for when the infinity to negative infinity, that's when the graph spans the entire x values. So this would so the graph could look something like this and where there it's not a hybrid function with regards to or it could be a hybrid function but it doesn't have limits such as zero elsewhere. So that's for the one case. And then if it was a hybrid function with more like the zero elsewhere like this, this, a neg uh like a neg half x as an example, sort of like 0, x to 2, 0, elsewhere, then we don't have to worry about the other side. We can just look at the 0 and the 2. So we could calculate the mean, the mean as equaling the anti-diff of 2, 0, x times fx, dx. So the main difference for this one is here, which is the x. So if you just calculated the area underneath, the probability would just be this without the x. However, the x means that it changes it for the mean. So if you're a bit confused about the difference between the two, this is for fx values in which it's not a hybrid, or if it's a hybrid, it goes all the way through without zero elsewhere. And then if it is has zero elsewhere, then we can just find the mean by using the anti-diff of the two zero, so whatever the domain is for the actual function that isn't just zero. So the main thing is to remember is that formula and to remember putting that x in. So the next one is the median. So the median is the middle value of the distribution. So if it's the middle probability value, then we can find it just by going that, so this is for the median. And we can say that the probability of x being greater than, let's say, m, where we'll, like, we'll let m equal the median, must equal 0 0.5. So it means that the median is in the very center. So because it's in the center, that means that to either side is going to have a 50% chance of being less than it or greater than it. So you could also write it as, so equivalently, equivalently, you could also write the probability of x, I think that's not equal to m, is equal to 0 0.5, and remember that the gr equals doesn't affect it. So once we know that this equation, so once you've got this, you can solve for it, and then work out what the median is. And the way you do that is you have fx, and then you if it spans, we'll do, it's the two scenarios once again. So if it spans from negative infinity to infinity, then you calculate the mean as, we'll, we'll let it x be greater than m. So we'll put m down here, infinity here, fx, dx must equal 0 0.5 and then we solve that equation. So what that means is you're finding the area 
So the, graphically, you're finding the area of a function, and you want to find m such that the area to the right of it is equal to 0 0.5, i.e. 50%. And that value is the median. So that's the first way with infinity to negative infinity. However, if you were looking at so, like a piecewise function that was more like fx is equal to a half x, 0x to 2, 0 elsewhere, then the graph looks something more like that. Now, just like before, we can sort of restrict what we're talking about to 0 and to 2. And that's because of this, which is 0 to x to 2. And it's because the area underneath that part is just 1, and the 0 elsewhere is mainly just for the notation. So looking at this, the formula still stands that the probability of x has to be greater than m equals 0 0.5. So for this one now, we can say that the median, so the median you can calculate by going the antidiff of m, but now it's to 2. So whatever the 2, the infinity is, that's the upper limit. So you have the 2 here, you have the infinity here, and that's it. The, the upper limit of whatever graph it is. So up here, that's the upper limit. On here, this is the upper limit. So you have 2 m um, fx, so this would be a half x, because you're just subbing in fx, dx, and you let it equal 2 a half. And then you can just solve for whatever that is. So with the median, you get the probability of x is greater than m, which is equal to 0 0.5. So you put m into the integral, either in the bottom, or you can put it in the top. If you put it in the top, instead of having the upper limit, such as the, as you can see by the purple, you will then have the lower limit, and you will have m on the top. So we can solve for this one, just so you can see an example. So then we antidiff like normal, so we get x squared on 4, 2m, and then you just have on the right hand side now, you have it equals a half. Sub in these values and you get 4 on 4 minus m squared on 4 is equal to a half. And then we can go 4 minus m squared is equal to 2. So what I did there is I took out 1 on a quarter as a factor, then I times 4 over. Then you can plus m squared to one side minus 2 and you get m squared is equal to 2. Then m is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2. Now we can look at this graph and think, well the domain is between 0, x and 2. So therefore, m must be greater or equal to 0. That's because it has to be within this domain. Yeah, so that's quite important. It has to be within this domain. Therefore, m must equal the square root of 2. So it can't equal the negative 2. So then you can say that the median is equal to the square root of 2. And you can solve that for the different equations. However, one hard bit is if it's a hybrid function and there are multiple parts to it, you may need to calculate it separately. So if it was a hybrid function with three different parts, so, so fx is equal to, so here we have a hybrid function, and that's three different inputs, so we have a quarter between 0, x and 1, and x between 1 and uh, root 10, 2, and then 0 elsewhere, so quickly, graphically it will look something like that, to the 1, and then, so that's a quarter, and it would go up, and it would be something like that. However, uh, you don't need it, it doesn't matter too much what it looks like. But the main thing is the area does equal 1, and it can represent a probability function. Now, if you want to find the median, the problem is you have two different equations here. You have the quarter, and then you have the x. So you can't just sub into one equation. So what you can do here is you can think that there's a quarter between 0, x, and 1, so that's only going to take a bit of the area, and then there's a bit a lot of the other area which is probably going to be the majority. So what you could do and solve is you could say that um, the probability 
of x being greater than m has to equal 0 0.5. You can assume that the top 50% is are between this range, and then you can be like the m to root 10 on 2 is equal to x dx is equal to 0 0.5, and then solve for m. Or another way you could do it is you could say that you could check what 1, 0, quarter dx is equal to. And you'll find that that is equal to a quarter. So representing that graphically, uh, you have the quarter here and then you have the three quarters made up from the other area. So you could then solve this or you could think that if a quarter is made up from the first area, then for there to be a half, so for the, for the half line, you will then need to take another course, another quarter from the next section. So you could say that m up here starting at 1, x, dx must equal 0 0.25. And that's because you've already accounted for 25% here, and now you just need the other 25%. So effectively what you're finding is the probability of x is less than m is equal to 0 0.5. So these two will give you the same answer. m is equal to plus or minus root 6 on 2 using both methods. However, as it has to be between this range, it can't be negative. So there we can say that the final answer is that m, so the median, is equal to root 6 on 2. The third measure, so that's the mode. So that's the most frequently occurring, otherwise known as like the highest probability. So here we have three different functions that you've gr that you can graph. Now you can look at the mode just by inspection. You can say that here is the mode. So that point here at the tip, the tip, so mode. So that is the turning point. You can say that here is the mode, and so that's the end point. And so there is the mode. And then once again, that's an endpoint. So the mode is relatively easy to calculate once you can graph it. So to calculate the mode, if, I would suggest graphing it because that's the easiest uh, way. However, if the graph is complicated, um, you can, or you don't have time, you can identify what type of shape it is, look at both endpoints, and then calculate it that way. So looking at this, this is a straight line, then you know that there's not going to be a turning point. So therefore one of the endpoints, whichever one it is, must be the mode. So you can sub it in, that equals zero, so obviously that's not the mode, so this one must be the mode. Looking at this uh, slightly exponential graph, you know that it's gonna be the most, the highest x value, which will be the mode. Then looking at w whatever type of graph um, this is, obviously there's not an equation here, However, when there is a turning point, um, it's probably easiest quickly to sketch it, and then you can also solve for the turning point. So that's how you can calculate the mode. So in summary with the three distributions, the mode is here, we just calculated. The uh, median, to calculate you have to solve that the probability of x is greater than m is equal to 0 0.5. So that's for the median. And then for the mean, you solve for a and b, where a could equal infinity, b could equal negative infinity, or whatever the uh, r domain is that you're thinking about, then x times fx. So remember that if fx is equal to x, then it will be x squared. dx, and whatever that equals, will be the mean.